Okay, so I'm supposed to. Becomes point three. Sixteen point five, number twenty-five, right? Yeah. Okay, and in this, I'm supposed to write the limits of integration over this surface in every coordinate system that I have available. Okay, so they tell me that the radius of the cone is one, and then it sticks straight up, basically. And then it's a 90 degree angle between the uh, edge of the cone and the edge of the uh, sphere. Is that what they say? Yeah. It says that vertex. That's not a vertex. Yeah, cone topped by sphere of radius one, centered at origin, 90 degrees at the vertex. I mean, that's this vertex down here. Okay. Yeah, the other one would be really hard to figure out. Yeah. Yeah, so they tell they're telling me that this thing here is the unit sphere. Right? And that there's a cone with a vertex of 90 uh, with a vertex angle of 90 degrees. Okay, so that's a lot easier than I thought it was 90 degrees between uh, the edge of the sphere and the edge of the cone. Yeah, that would probably be damn near impossible to figure out. <laughs> you chase the trigger around for a while. Yeah. You know? uh, yeah, that would be terrible. Uh, the tool you would want for that, just so if you interpreted this the other way, where you had some kind of a circle, right? and some kind of cone thing, and you wanted this to be a 90 degree angle, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, um, so small problem. This is a radius of the yeah. circle, right? So it's always 90 degrees. That's always 90 degrees. Okay, see that? Mm -hmm. right, the angle between the radius and the tangent line of the circle is always 90 degrees. We'll actually show that today in kind of a weird way. That doesn't give you any information, right? Mm -hmm. And so you could chase that around all day, and you'll never determine a cone here. Because every cone has that. Yeah. Okay, so let's try it the way that the way that I think it should be written. So let me see. Uh, did they give me a function? Probably not, right? No. No. Okay, so I need to be triple integrating. I don't know. I'm going to put a row. Oh, I'm not going to put row in here. That would be confusing. I'm going to put f of x, y, and z in here. And then I'm, it should be integrating dv, right? Okay, so I think I picked x, y, and z, right? For my first attempt. Okay, so looking at this guy, where do your z's vary? From the cone to the sphere. Yeah, the z's go from the cone to the sphere. Okay. Then, once you smash this thing in the Z's, <coughs> what picture are you looking at? Circle. Yeah, you're looking at a circle. What's the radius of that circle? One, I think, if you track this down. It says the radius of the sphere is one, right? Okay, you see that? And it's smashed down. So, well, <coughs> I don't have the whole sphere, right? You guys right. see that? Mm -hmm. I just have this little ice cream oh. topper thing. The radius of that circle that I get when I smash this thing is going to depend on how steep that cone was. You guys see that? If the angle at the bottom of the cone, cone was 180, oh, then I would get a radius of 1. Oh, so if it's not 180, that radius is definitely... Yeah, it's definitely smaller than one. So I need to figure out where that cone hits the sphere, right? Should be the radius of the. You guys look good with that? That be cosine of the. So I think I need this. I think I need a picture sideways, right? So I've got my circle and this thing, right? 
What should this angle be? 45 degrees. Should be 45 degrees. Okay, so I've got this picture going on. Right? Okay, so if that's 45, what do I need? Which side of this thing do I need? You know, the hypotenuse would be 1 there. Good, I know the hypotenuse is 1 because it's hitting the radius 1 sphere, right? Well, on the z-axis, it's 0 to 1, so I guess that'd be the adjacent side then. I don't think the other side would also be 1, would it? Uh, yeah, this would also be 1. Right, because it's a radius of the sphere. But what I need isn't the adjacent thing in this picture. What I need to know is how big that circle is when you smash it, right? Couldn't you also so find the equation of the cone? Yeah, you can find the equation of the cone and then set it. X squared plus Y squared, right? Because every slice of Z is a circle. So that's a circular cone. Do you know that one's the one with 90 degree angle at the vertex? Well, if it's always a 90 degree angle in the vertex, then you can assume that it's equal all the way around. Uh -huh. When you slice it, it'll be 90 degrees if it's but, in the vertex. Yeah, the same thing would be true for 100 degrees too, right? That would make it non-elliptical, right? So, no, it would be circular still. So that would work. <laughs> but what I need to know is that the equation that you said, right, mm -hmm. that z is the square root of x squared plus y squared, I need to know that's the cone that I'm talking about here. Okay. Because that cone might be the 100 degree cone or yeah. the 80 degree cone, I don't know. Yeah. It is actually the 90 degree cone, but you need to know that, right? Okay. So if I don't know that, then I think I have to go with this thing. This is the yeah. radius of this circle, right? Yeah. Which is the? Cosine of 45. Which is the what? Oh, sorry. That's an opposite side, right? Okay. So this should be the sine of 45 degrees? I'll be the same answer. Though. Which is the same thing as the cosine of 45 degrees, right? Mm -hmm. Yes? So, but what, why does that have to be sine and cosine? It's reversible. And yeah, the picture is symmetrical. It doesn't the, matter. Because the angle but is... But it's the side opposite the angle. It's because the angle oh, is... Okay. It's the angle from the z-axis, it's not the x-axis. Oh, okay, because it's coming from this. Okay, that makes sense. It's true, right, that this angle is also 45 yeah. degrees, and you can chase oh, it out. Works, I, I was using that angle. That was the problem. Okay, that makes sense. That's all cool with Okay, so what I found out is that this circle that I get when I smash this thing has a <laughs> radius of root 2 over 2. Root two, over two. Okay, so... Which one do you want to integrate out first, or what's the equation of the circle or something? That's something else I was wondering. Would you do one plus the other in this uh, in this problem, or would it be uh, just one integral with two different kinds of shapes on it? Here, these are the bounds of my region, right? Oh, so it doesn't really matter what the answer is? You could, of course, split this into some pieces. Like, you could integrate over the cone and then integrate over this little chunk of a sphere. That would be fine. But in this case, I can get all of it as long as I organize things a little bit well. If I organize things like integrating the y's out first, then I'd need two integrals. But I'm getting away with something because I kind of looked at this thing and I thought, okay, if I get the z's out first, then it'll be totally symmetrical, right? The z is, or sorry, not symmetrical, but uniform, right? The z's everywhere go from the cone to the sphere. So I don't have to do this like, well, sometimes they start at the whatever and go to the whatever, and other times they start at the whatever else and go to the whatever else, right? Um, what do you want to get rid of next? Y, Why? X and Y don't. They're both root two over two. Oh, so they're not all minus oh, root right. two over two to root two uh, over two because it's not a square. Yeah, I just realized that. Right? So these should go from the bottom of the circle. Or wait, y's? If I'm doing y's? Y's go from the left side to the right side. 
X's would go from the bottom to the top. So Y's go from left circle to right circle. And then these X's, where do they go? Those are the ones that are bottom to the Yeah, so those go from negative root 2 over 2 to positive root 2 over 2. And now I think I need to put in some more. All right, so I'm sure of that last thing. Now I need to know something about the left circle and the right circle. How about what's the equation for the circle? That would be the unit circle, right? So you have root 2 over 2 squared. You guys all with that? So that's the equation of my circle. I want to know where the y's range, right? So I should solve this for y. Why? Uh, why don't the y's range the same distance as like, the axes do? Isn't it symmetrical in both directions? Yeah, so if I range the y's from minus root 2, yeah, minus 1 over root 2 to plus 1 over root 2, I would get a square. See that? But my y's don't go that whole distance. They start at the left side and go to the right side. You all with that? That's really kind of this whole process, right? I'm doing this. I'm saying, okay, where do the z's start and stop? Well, the z's start at the cone and stop and spare. Once I've taken the z information out, smash tip, where do the y's go? Well, the y's start on the left side and go to the right side. Once I smash the y information out, then where do the x's range? Well, the x's just go from wherever they start to wherever they stop. Cool. Okay. Uh, how do you? Oh, we were going to solve this for y, right? Yeah. Okay. So we got y is what? Square root of root two of two squared minus x squared, right? Yeah. Plus or minus, right? The square root of one half minus x squared. Yeah? Yep. Okay, so which one's the left half? The negative. the negative one. So we're going from minus root one half minus x squared to root one half plus, oops, one half minus x squared. Okay, so that's my y's. Where do my z's go? Well, the top half, you can find it by using the... Sorry, I'm going from the outside end, right? So my x's are supposed to go from the cone to the sphere, right? And this is the point where I cannot get away from having an equation for that freaking cone. So I have to know that that cone, right, is the x squared plus y squared square root equals z cone. So, spend a second, you'll think of a cone equation. How uh, many plus? Yeah, plus plus Can I just jack something up? You sure that's not the equation of the sphere? It's yeah, that's not the equation of the sphere. That's a circle, right? Right. This would be x squared plus y squared, kind of think circle, equals z squared. Uh, so it's all in the positive Z, it looks like. Yeah, and this picture is all happening in the positive Z, so that's why I'm not putting a minus on that thing. You guys all see that? Now, what's the equation for the sphere? So the equation for the sphere is x squared plus y squared plus z squared is 1. And I need to solve for z, right? So I get the square root of what? One minus x squared minus y squared. One minus x squared minus y squared. How did you get the bottom bound in there? So the bottom bound is a cone. Okay. Is there 
That's me knowing that the equation of this cone is z is the square root of x squared plus y squared. Now the way you happen upon that is probably to think to yourself, okay, I need something that makes a 45 degree angle with the z axis, right? So that should be like z and x, right, if I slice this way. Mm -hmm. To get that 45 degree angle, what's the equation of this line? Z equals x, so you really, but you need to get rid of it. Yeah, that'd be z equals x, right? Oh. But it should also be the equation z is y in the other direction. <laughs> it should also be the equation z is minus x, right? Because it should come in from the other side, too. It should also be the equation z is minus y. Well, what the hell's going on? This is why you don't label your x, ever. If we skipped all this and we thought to ourselves, well, there's one variable. Let me call it r, because this thing is uniform with respect to angle, right? This should be the equation z is r. What's the radius? Well, the radius is the square root of x squared plus y squared. You can all see that? That's how you cheat this. Think cylindrical even though you're writing frickin' Cartesian. Cool? All right, and then we'd have what? Our integrand, f of x, y, and z, and then we'd have our d, z, d, y, d, x. <coughs> You guys all good with this? Yep. Okay, let's let, let's write the cylindrical one down really quick because it'll be really easy. Uh, so that would be f of r and theta and z. And I suppose I should add some kind of decoration to f to denote that it's not the same formula. So I'm going to add a little p that means no. I'm going to add a little c that means F written in cylindrical. Right? <laughs> okay, and then uh, what else do I need here? Uh, D, R, D, R, D. Oh, R, D. I need D, R, D. D's, right? So I need a D, D, and a D. And I need a R. R. That is a weird spot to write the multiplication. Not a top yeah, and I know that's not a dot product, right? Well, it's a dot product between one-dimensional factors. One more multiplication signs. Okay, so where do my bounds go? Where do the z's go? Zero to one. Do the z's go in the same bound? Z's go in the same places, right? They go from the cone to the sphere. You just need to write the cone and the sphere in cylindrical instead of in. So. They go from R, right? Because that's still the equation of the cone. The cone's still z equals R. Okay, so they go from z is R to, uh-oh. So in cylindrical, the x squared plus y squared plus z squared is 1, is R squared plus z squared is 1, right? The square root of r squared plus 1. Square root of 1 minus r squared. Yeah. So careful solving. Yeah. Solving. Okay, so that was the z's, right? So I integrated the z's out first. For the same reason I did in the other one. Okay, now where do your, I don't know, what's next? What do you want to deal with next? Um, theta. Thetas? Oh, okay. I mean, it doesn't matter, actually. Theta's really easy. It's just okay. two, 2 pi because it's a full circle. Good. Cool. Check. Zero to 2 pi in the thetas. And in the r's? I think we figured out from last time that's from 0 to root 2 over 2. Or? The book has it uh, 1 over root 2, and that's what I also had for the media. Oh, the last one. <laughs> 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 it's 
Those are the same number. <laughs> yeah. Uh, root 2 over root 2 root 2, right? And then you can onesie one of those. <laughs> yeah. Good. <laughs> so that's your r's go from 0 to 1 over the square root of 2. Or 2 over root 2. Or whatever the hell the other No, the other thing. Flip that over. The we thing shall just be confused. Cool? Good? So that's Cartesian, cylindrical, spherical. Should we do spherical quick? Yeah. This one is spherical awesome. should be really fast, right? Yeah. Why should spherical be fast? Because this is basically a sphere. Because this is just a chunk of a sphere, right? So I'm writing my integrand as f s of rho, theta, and b. So again, you have to change the formula into spherical to make this work, right? Uh, and then what else do I need here? Rho squared sine of b. 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 It's actually phi. No, it's just b. It's phi. It's a modern Greek. It's a phi. The modern Greeks pronounce that letter phi. Okay, anyway, point is. <laughs> D what? Hmm. R, I, I don't know. D rho, D phi, D, I mean D rho, D phi. You want to do rho? Yes, we'll do it the same. B theta? Yep. Wouldn't rho. At the outset, right, you might worry that you might have to rearrange these. Yeah. Wouldn't rho be R? What? If Sorry. we hadn't done um, Cartesian first, how would you have gotten the uh, 1 over root 2? Yeah, I'd have to do the exact same thing to find the equation of that circle. Uh, I could, at the very least, like, when I'm thinking cylindrical, I know I have z is r, right? And I know I also have the sphere thing going on. So I also have that r squared plus z squared is 1, right? Okay, but z is r. So you have 2r squared is 1. And then you can solve. Cool, cool. Yes. All right. Uh, and spherical, uh, where do your rows go? Zero to one, because we know it has the spheres are easy. Right? Zero to one? Uh, OK. Are where do the fees go? B? Oh, um, zero to pi over four is what I got because it's about that. Yeah, right? It makes a 45 degree, or it makes a 90 degree angle with itself, so it makes a 45 degree angle with the z axis. Yep. So we need to go from 0 to pi over 4. And the thetas? Is 0 to 2 pi. 0 to 2 pi. Oh, cool. So what did we learn about the little ice cream cone thing? It's best to use spherical. Yeah. It's a pain in the ass in Cartesian. Cartesian. It's a little bit less of a pain in the ass in cylindrical, and it's a freaking rectangle in spherical. Yeah. Right? Okay. Good to know. That help? Mm -hmm.